Mad Series. We're ready to get you hooked up. We are standing at the starting line. About to start a brand new year, a new season, the 2007 season for the Bassmaster Elite Series. Our expectations are high because last year, this lake we're fishing blew away all our expectations. Lake Amistad and Ish Monroe capped it off with this incredible victory. Come and get you some of that! Come and get you some of that! Yeah! We'll take a look at it. This jewel in the desert southwest, Lake Amistad, probably the best big bass lake of a large size lake in this country. How good is it? Let's take a look at the big weights from the first three days of fishing in this tournament, including last year's Toyota Rookie of the Year, Steve Kennedy, 36 pounds and ounces on day number one of fishing. Day two, the man who finished second here last year, California's Fred Rumbanis, himself over 30 pounds, 33-2 for Rumbanis, and the man who finished last season with the last regular season win at Lake Table Rock, Todd Faircloth again up over 36 pounds and seven ounces. Let's take a look at that full leaderboard right now as we get ready for this fourth day of fishing on Lake Amistad. This is championship day, and our leader, a rookie, originally from Minnesota, now living in Alabama, Derek Remen, and there's the big name Steve Kennedy, Mike Iconelli, right there not too far back, Faircloth in there, Evers, Van Dam, Pike. Well, 80 pounds plus for three days of bass fishing. Tommy Sanders, Mark Zona here. Are we on pace? Are we better on Amistad this year than we were last year? You know, Tommy, really, I thought last year might have been a fluke. The water temps were perfect. They were 65 degrees. Big bass were funneling into the shallows. Coming here this year, I thought we're going to find out what Lake Amistad is all about. Might be a little bit tougher. Not happening. You need to stay tuned today. Big bass the whole show. Let's look how it lays out. Probably the best big, big bass impoundment in the country right there, Lake Amistad. 68,000 acres. This place has more shoreline than the entire Texas Gulf Coast. Beautiful, clear water. It looks like something out of National Geographic. Well, and, and here's how you know you're on a great lake right now. You know, first place, Derek Remitz fishing very close to Diablo East, fishing Main Lake Points, fishing very deep. On the other side of it, go east from there, Michael Iconelli fishing way up in San Pedro Flats, fishing only about 8 to 15 feet of water. Our second place guy, Steve Kennedy, only concentrating on swim bait fishing in Exxon Cove, 15 to 25 feet of water. So what I'm trying to say, wherever you want to fish, you can catch big bass on Lake Amistad. We got them everywhere out here. Our weather throughout the tournament, each day started with a little cloud cover, then burning off to blue skies. Today, going to be a different story, a lot of drizzle, some thunderstorms on the way. So let's take a look at our leader from days one and two, Steve Kennedy, getting it going. I really think this bike's gonna be on this morning. I got my fingers crossed. Absolutely incredible that first morning. And hadn't seen them good since. So I'm hoping, I'm praying. I was all over the lake that first day. Everywhere I stopped, I caught a big one. Second day, I never saw a big one. Yesterday, I might have seen a couple, but they just, they wouldn't eat. So. <laughs> this is something special, whether we catch them or not. May scare him to death. And that man right there, Steve Kennedy, is Derek Remitt's biggest headache this morning. Said he finished the day on day three, finding huge giant bass cruising in Exxon Cove, and that's exactly where he's starting. What is up? 63 degrees this morning. About 55 when we got here earlier this week. So huge change this week. Oh. That was a bite, man. It's the kind of bite you're looking for, too. He pushed it. If this one doesn't bite, we're in trouble. And there he is! He's been sitting there for days. I hadn't been here early to get him. Hate it out of sight, too. That's awesome. right there for Steve Kennedy. He gets his day started out right. That fish gives him a two and a half pound lead now 
over Derek Rimmitz. And now the man everyone's looking over their shoulder at at this tournament, Michael Iaconelli. Jerry's with him. Okay, guys, I am in San Pedro Flats. The storm really hasn't hit us yet. And in fact, it's very pleasant out here right now. I think we've probably got a couple more hours before the wind really picks up. Out there in front of all the spectator boats is Iaconelli, and he's been working around in that uh, brush and that cover. Mike, like a lot of these guys, wants that wind to get up where he can start throwing that swim bait. And, and Mike, you know, I'm going to make a, a, a duh statement. In order to win this, win this event, you have to catch a big string of fish every single day. But that's not as easy as it sounds. You know, we've had some guys catch 30, 35 pounds and get skunked the next day. The consistent guys are the ones you better, you better watch out for. Mike caught 25 pounds the first day, 25 pounds the second day, 25 pounds again. If he does that a fourth day, obviously he's going to be a threat. You know, the thing about it is I'm about three pounds out, and here three pounds is like an ounce. It's just, it's rare that you put yourself in a position to legitimately win a tournament. And I have that today, so I'm going to fish harder. I'm going to fish harder and I'm going to concentrate more probably than you've ever seen me fish in my life. I want this one. I'd like to start out the year with a bang. There he goes. Big one. Go, oh, big one. Go. That's how they choke a swim bait down. Just like that, seven pounder. That's how they choke a swim bait down. God, it feels good. You think they wanted that? You think he wanted that? I think he did. I think he wanted that. Yes, he did. He wanted that one, didn't he? Michael Iaconelli doesn't take him long to get started on this final day either. With that, he leaps over Derek Rimmitz into second place, just a pound and a half behind Steve Kennedy. We are early in the fishing on our final championship day. Take a look at the leaderboard with Kennedy, Iaconelli, Derek Rimmitz, also Todd Faircloth, Edwin Evers, Davey Hyde, a former Classic winner. How about another guy who's won two Classics, also the all-time leading money winner, Biggest name in the sport right now, Kevin Van Dam is an element in this final 12 on this championship day. We'll take a closer look at Derek Rimmitz, our rookie. Someone is going to catch a 30-pound bag today, and you don't want to miss it. Stay with us. The Bassmaster Elite Series Battle on the Border is brought to you by Lawrence. Curator. And by Toyota Tundra. Welcome back. First stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. And we kick it off where we kicked it off last year. Here in the desert southwest at incredible Lake Amistad. You want to talk about an incredible performance. How about Seiji Kato, who is our non-boater championship. They wrap that up after the first three days of fishing. Seiji catching 48-2 and winning $50,000. Incredible stuff. Steve Kennedy, our leader right now, early on fishing this championship day, using a swim bait. Uh, Steve Kennedy and Mike Iaconelli starting off the day throwing a swim bait, and both of them said, if you get on the right school, you can have 35 pounds in an hour. How about our leader to start this day? The rookie, originally from Minnesota, now from Alabama, Derek Rimmitz, doing something else completely different. No swim baits for this guy. It's all about a jig and all about deep water. Right now, I'm kind of hovering on that edge where it you know, breaks from about 30 to ni almost 90 right here. And I'm guessing right about there is that you know, first 10 feet of that lip. You know, I always try to throw it, you know, just work at that little five or 10 feet area. You know, but if you flip out five feet the wrong way, it just falls right down that bluff and basically a wasted cast. So I've really been just almost dead sticking it right on that break. I don't know if they're, I think they're just cruising up and down those little ledges or they kind of load up on a little bit. And then I try to throw straight, straight across and almost bring it parallel with it if I can. That's, you know, probably only make the right cast 20% of the time. It's, you kind of got to soak it there right on that edge. And you know, most of my bites are coming when I'm just kind of sitting like this and you just feel them suck it up. So I'd like to see what it looks like down there, yeah. 
Well, guess what, Tommy? I got a little creative. We're going to show you exactly what Derek's doing right here. Lake Amistad, it has two ledges on it, these points that Derek's fishing. One of them is the primary ledge, and it's about, call it three to five feet. There's a few fish up there right now. He is not concentrating on that lip. He's going to the second flat. That range is 25 to 35 feet of water. There's not a lot of bass down here, but it's definitely harboring the right size bass. He's barely moving his jig. He's almost fishing it kind of like live bait, just shaking his rod and waiting for that real light tick. And every bass he's setting the hook on seems to be over five pounds. Not only is it a sweet technique, we're gonna talk a little bit about Derek's sideburns right now. <laughs> he bears a striking resemblance to one of the X-Men superheroes, Wolverine, with like a like a slash of John Stamos. Let me ask you this. That looks like a very small target, a very small strike there. Does he have superpowers to, to be able to keep that bait in that well, space? Right now, the key to his fishing is all boat control. If you've ever fished deep, if you're a hardcore bass fisherman, you have to completely maintain contact with your bait. If you lose contact with your bait, useless. Derek Rimmett's 24 years old, originally from the state of Minnesota, done a lot of offshore, as you might call it, fishing up there in that area. Has never fished for spawning bass before, maybe once or twice. But look at that fish right there. That is going to jump him back up to the top of the leaderboard, now unofficially 88.08. Derek Rimmett is back on top. Get the heart pumping a little bit. Derek Rimmitz with a great campaign in the Northern Opens last year to get here. He could double his earnings this year. The man with the most earnings, though, in the Bassmaster history, Kevin Van Dam. There's, there's a, some scattered little grass and a little bit of bushes on this flat. And with the wind blowing up in here, um, there's actually, uh, they're, they're just up here feeding. They're really not going to spawn here. It's too shallow for that. But there's bait up here in the morning. I've been even catching stripers up here in two foot of water. So I know they're up here to eat. So all you gotta do is get that bait close to one and they're gonna, they're gonna get it. There he is, good one too. That's a big one. Yep. Yep, good one. I knew I just missed one like this too. Please stay on there. One problem with these treble hook baits is sometimes you can lose them. Also, it's, <laughs> it's good because sometimes you catch them. Oh, he's not a giant. A good fish, though. King Chad. I thought he was bigger. He was following. Well, that's exactly what the other anglers want to see. Kevin Van Dam cracking into the top five, but that's just what he does with that fish right there. Now over to Michael Iconelli, huge flat called the San Pedro area. Looks like he's tying on the swim bait. All right, swim bait, special hook with a big shank. Get that big shank way in the back. Got that two stingers in the bottom, there you go. Tilapia, tilapia imitation. Come on, when you get a good one to commit to this bait, it's done, which tells me I'm fishing too slow. I gotta cover a little more water. See, it's, a, it's hard because you gotta reel it slow, but you wanna cover water. Because if you put this in front of one of them big ones with this wind, they're gonna bite it. And, that, and that's the kind we need to win the tournament, is we need everything's gotta be five pounds plus. Everything. Oh, big one. Ugh. Five pounder. Again, look at that. Everyone. Everyone choking it. Choking it. Here we got the right bait. We got the right pattern. <clears throat> got blood on my hands, baby. Ooh. Isn't that amazing how they're eating it? <laughs> bait six inches and it's gone. What is that the sound of? Is that a guy? Okay, sucking in the bait. Michael Iconelli with that fish goes into second place. What is a swim bait? We're going to tell you all about the swim baits and why it works for guys like Iconelli and Kennedy when we come back. The Bassmaster Elite Series, our first stop of 11 regular season events 
right where we kicked it off last year. Incredible Lake Amistad here in the desert southwest. They crushed them here last year. They're doing pretty much the same thing this year. Take a look at our leaderboard right now. The rookie Derek Remitz on top, followed by Michael Iconelli, former Angler of the Year. In fact, last year's Angler of the Year and last year's Rookie of the Year. Steve Kennedy hanging in there as well. Held the lead through the first two days of this tournament. He's got another one on right there. Doesn't look as big as the ones he's been catching, though. Take a look at this. No, he's going to have to call this fish if he wants a prayer of competing in this one, Zona. You know, what Steve said at the end of day three, he said, man, I have found a magic tree. I found a tree in the back of Exxon Cove that appears to have a dozen eight to ten pound bass. Right now, Steve Kennedy has got to figure out how to make one of those bite. There he is. There he is. Big fish. Oh, huge fish. Oh, I'm gonna get in the tree. It's got to play her down. It's gonna take a minute. That is the bite we're holding on. There's a tree. That is the bite we were looking for. Stay out of the tree, baby. Okay, watch yourself here. It's not the way you do it. Put that bait down her throat. Wow, what a bite. Huge fish, though. Huge fish. Wow. I think Steve Kennedy may have mastered the swim bait, right? Wow, that's interesting you bring that up. Look what I have here, Tommy. Oh. It's a swim bait, exactly. And what this is, these guys are mimicking the number one forage for big bass in Lake Amistad, the tilapia. Now, tilapia, the best way to describe it, it's like a big bluegill. And these big ones really key in on this bait. And these guys just are, they're, they're not aimlessly throwing this bait out and just coming through trees and stuff like that. They know exactly where these submerged trees are, and they're kind of just ticking the outside limbs. And one of the amazing things about a swim bait is, you know, I thought they would hammer this thing. You know, I talked to Steve Kennedy, I talked to Mike Iconelli, and they said, boy, these fish would just tick this bait, and then their rod would load up. And what's happening is the fish would come up behind it, engulf the whole bait, and then your rod would load up, and you catch a six to eight pounder. All right. The guy who's getting it done largely without the swim bait, though, this year is our leader, Derek Remitz, and Jerry is with him right now. Well, Tommy and Z, I am sitting on the best bass fishing lake in America. Can I say that? On a bass catching day. So I guess we're going to see, and I know you've, you've, Folks have seen the lineup of the top 12, and you've seen Davey Height and Iconelli and Van Dam and Reese, and you're wondering who in the world is Derek Rimmitz. Well, I'll tell you who Derek Rimmitz is. We're following him right here, and he is a rookie who has qualified for this event, qualified for the elites out of the Northern Opens. In the first two days of this event, he managed to catch just under 50 pounds. <laughs> he followed that up yesterday with 30 more pounds. He is in position. This rookie sitting right behind me here is in position to catch 100 pounds of bass this week. Now, it looks like he's just fishing a nothing bank, doesn't it? Well, let me, let me tell you, he, his boat is probably f sitting in 30, maybe 35 feet of water. The old river channel, the old creek channel swings in right against that bank. And it looks like he might be casting towards the bank, and that's the, the sweet spot, but it's not. It's underneath his boat is the sweet spot. It comes out about, again, about out to where his boat is and then drops off into the ocean of 60, 80 feet of water. When he gets off that ledge, he catches no more fish. Now, I want to show you the lure that uh, Derek is fishing. This is a, a little football jig, a three-quarter ounce head on a, on a football jig, a uh, plastic uh, uh, trailer. And he likes that football jig because it doesn't seem to get hung up in rocks quite as badly. And again, the sweet spot is about 35 feet of water. I'd say from 25 to 35. When it swings out off that ledge, it's over with. He reels it back in and casts it again. And the strike, have you ever been crappie fishing with a little jig? The strike feels just like a crappie bite, just a little tick, and it can be a monster. I tell you what, uh, Zona and Tommy, look at him over there. He can win this thing.
So we got a guy from Minnesota fishing this lake down here in the desert southwest. I mean, I mean they don't have situations like these. Those are natural lakes up in Minnesota. How do you get the skills to do this thing? No, actually, they, they do have a lot of lakes like this where we're from. They just don't have all the timber and the brush and stuff like that or the fish that are this size. But if you go to lakes in Minnesota, Michigan, New York, Tommy, they're just like this. I mean, you kind of grow up fishing this way. In fact, I asked Derek, I said, where did you learn how to fish deep water? He said, man, this is textbook walleye fishing. And, and it is. I mean, the 20 to 40 foot flats where we're from are identical to this. Take a look at that fish right there. That is a huge one right there for Derek Rimmett. Puts him back up in the lead unofficially. Now we've got him at 95 pounds and so much fishing left to go on this final day as we take you over to Michael Iaconelli. And the one thing Mike's going to do, he's going to lay the swim bait down now and start punching through these trees. And Mike said the biggest key to his trees are finding the ones you couldn't see above the water. You needed to find the trees below the water. <laughs> Here's a six pounder. Look at that, how fat that fish is. It's been slow today, but look at that. Give it to you real quick. 1989, meet 2007. All right, good stuff. Michael Iaconelli stumbled onto something right there. He's doing the dance. We're going to dance our way through all 12 qualifiers when we come back, including guys like Ken Broder, Jeff Street, John Murray, Todd Faircloth. He won the last tournament of the regular season last year. But can the rookie hang on and win this thing? We'll be back. Event number one of the season, 2007 for the Bassmaster Elite Series, and we are tearing them up on Lake Amistad. There's our leader right there, the rookie Derek Rimmett's over 95 pounds of bass in the boat. Michael Iaconelli, Steve Kennedy, and others giving chase right there. Can the rookie hang on? We got a lot more fishing to go on this final day. Covering 12 guys, including this man, Ken Broder from Niantic, Connecticut, currently in eighth place, a big tie for eighth place. Ken Broder, the man in line for our Toyota Moving Forward Award. He finished in 98th here at Amistad last year. And tied with Ken right now, Ardmore, Oklahoma's Jeff Creep anchoring his week with a first day catch of 26 pounds, 14 ounces. He was the only angler after the day three weigh-in to catch 19 pounds and be mad. Our Western angler, one of the big stars, John Murray. On that bush shootout back in 2004, John Murray told us that he burned up most of his fish just trying to make the 50 cut through the first two days. He's having to go and look for new places to fish today. John Murray at the bottom of the pack, but looking to move up. If he can just get around the big ones, he can get it done. And how about the guy that won last year's regular season event, the last one of the year at Table Rock, Todd Faircloth. And Todd Faircloth is doing the exact same thing Steve Kennedy's doing. He's looking for one of these magic trees in 15 to 20 feet of water. And I asked Todd, I said, you know, you caught 36 pounds on day three. And he said, Zona, I caught that in about one hour. He said, I came across this tree, and it had about eight to nine fish just suspended in the top of it. It's a typical table rock pattern for the spring, and it's working on Lake Amistad right now. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, man. Three anglers from out west are doing well in this tournament. John Murray, Skeet Reese, and this man, Ish Monroe, won it all last year. But that was a lot of sight fishing. He's kind of shut out from that. Yeah, and everybody thought coming into the weekend with this heavy warming trend that a ton of bass were going to make a push to the bank. Tommy, that never happened. You can go along the banks of Amistad right here, just like go 100 yards inside of where Ish is at right there. You'll find hundreds of beds, but no fish on them. Got him. Oh, God. Oh, my God. He's a freaking 7, 8 pounder. God. Mm. God. Mm. Oh, missed it. Oh, Ish, 
بقى كده <laughs> Almost anywhere else we go this year, Ish would be crushing the competition with action like that. As it is, he only breaks into the top six, still 14 pounds behind our leader, Derek Remus. So obviously, this young man's doing something special. Ish is having fun losing right now. But yeah. let's take a look at Derek Remitz's milk run right here. Derek is fishing a series of main lake points. He's the only guy in the top 12 doing this, and they're very, very deep points. Now, the difference between Derek and, say, Steve Kennedy and Mike Iaconelli, they've got schools of bass in the areas they're fishing. Derek said, he goes, I only want to catch one big fish off of each one of these points. He's only getting about six to eight bites a day, but they're the right bites. All right, not many bites, so we better not leave him for long. Let's get back out on the water and Derek Rim. Pretty solid pattern I've been running all week. And usually you know in about the first 10 minutes if there's fish there, you catch one or two right away. So probably do a lot of hole jumping today. I feel like I gotta stick this out for a little while, even if you, know, you could run every spot in the first three hours and not get bit and then work your way back on every other spot and catch 30 pounds. I mean that's that's what happened Friday for me, so Look at this guy go. This guy's a rookie trying to be the first rookie to ever win his first outing with the big boys, and he is unflappable. And it's unbelievable how calm he is. But he said, he said after day two, he said, man, I thought I was doing the wrong thing on the total wrong pattern. He never had another tournament to boat near him the entire event. That's how you win tournaments. Probably shouldn't have swung that one, but he was coming. From our leader, rookie Derek Remitz, we're going to the veteran, Michael Iaconelli. Tell you what, last year here at Amistad, he was shut out of the top 12, finished in 13th place, and still went on to win Angler of the Year. He's got bigger plans this time. He pretty much feels like he's where he needs to be on this final day with plenty of fishing left. How about Kevin Van Dam? He's worked his way up to fifth place. Does he feel like he's where he needs to be? Here's the guy that really says never give up. Never give up on Van Dam. Steve Kennedy's going to fire back. Iconelli's going to shake up the scoreboard. It's all coming up. That's the tournament. I did it. I did it. That's the one right there. Bassmaster Elite Series. We're on Lake Amistad down here in the desert southwest, and the rookie Derek Rimmitz leads it right now, but plenty of fishing left to come. Plenty of pursuers as well, including Todd Faircloth of Texas. Two good ones in the boat for him so far on this final day. He cannot shake Michael Iaconelli either. Steve Kennedy led this thing the first two days. He's far from done on this final day, too. Let's take a look at the man who has moved up into fifth place on this championship day, the all-time money winner for Bassmasters. That would be Kevin Van Dam. Kevin Van Dam out here fishing a swim bait in some shallow water. There's a good one, big one, a giant. Oh my God, stay on, baby. Giant. Oh, come on, don't do this to me. It's hooked pretty good. It's not that big. It's a good one, though. Yeah! King Chad, baby. Woo! Look at that. 
number five, too. Zone of the year is young, but that is going to remain as one of the boss fish catches of the year. Look at that. That was probably one of the best strikes we'll see all year, how that thing hammered that swim bait. And Kevin's one of our only guys keying on very shallow flats. He said each one of these flats had a key spot where the big ones would set up on. Now we're going to jump over to Steve Kennedy right now, laid the swim bait down, picked up the spinning rod, and that tells you what's happened on this lake. Basically, any technique you want to use, you can apply it on Lake Amistad. There's a fish. I've got the tiniest little hook. And there's all kinds of trees down there. Stay down, baby. Stay down. <laughs> All the way up and jumping, back down 30 feet. Just like that. Kennedy's good. He can get it done just about any old way. He needs a couple more big fish. And obviously, Michael Iaconelli thinks he can catch two more big fish. Definitely. And the key to Mike's flipping right now is not the bait, really. It's the one ounce tungsten weight. He feels the real fast fall is what's igniting the big bass. There it goes. Bless that's the one. That's the big one. Oh my God. It's a giant. Oh God. It's a tournament. I did it. I did it. That's the one right there. It's another. It's another eight. I gotta get a buoy out. I gotta get a buoy out. I gotta get a buoy out. Relax. Relax, Mike. Relax, Mike. Where's your buoy? I gotta get the buoy. I gotta get the buoy. I'm getting close now, baby. I'm getting close now. I said it before and I'm gonna say it again. I'm a bad dude. He is a bad dude. No doubt about that, Michael Iaconelli is the show all to himself. When we come back, well, he's unofficially tied now with Derek Remitz. What do you call our man, Remitz? Uh, the Wolverine. The Wolverine. So we got Ike versus the Wolverine and probably a couple of other guys trying to get in on the act. When we get back, we're going to wrap it up. All the fishing when we return. Ah! Take a look at the leaderboard, the final day and the final moments of fishing in this championship day at Lake Amistad. First event of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. They are catching lots of big bass and they are not through yet. Our leaderboard shows an unofficial tie between last year's Angler of the Year, that man, Michael Iaconelli. He is tied up with the rookie, Derek Remitz, who's doing something completely different, fishing offshore, 30 feet of water, two contrasting styles. And Steve Kennedy led the first two days of this tournament. He is far from done yet on this final day as well. We're covering 12 anglers today, including the former Angler of the Year, former Classic champ, Davey Height, got his big win at Clarks Hill Reservoir last year. Not getting it done today to his satisfaction just yet. Edwin Evers, how about the Oklahoma kid? He won year before last, Lake Norman, North Carolina. He has vowed that he's gonna make this a run at the Angler of the Year title this year. He's in the top 12, he's doing good so far. 
and over to Auburn, California, Skeet Reese with another great finish. Just had a second place Lay Lake Bassmaster Classic. He's been a model of consistency this tournament, over 20 pounds each day. Derek Remitz, our leader, trying to be the first angler ever as a rookie to win his first tournament, fishing at the highest level of the Bassmasters. This young man, originally from Minnesota, now making his home in Alabama. Well, I've been fishing since I was a little kid, you know, probably five or six, but really got into bass fishing when I was about 12. And went and did some little club tournaments with my uncle and got the bug ever since, you know, it was pretty fun catching a bass and bringing it up on a scale, so. Yeah, I would have never imagined three years ago, even, well, you know, even last year, I would have never thought I'd be up here fishing with all my heroes, you know. No one would have blamed this guy if he just absolutely came apart on the final day. A rookie first tournament ever at the top level of the Bassmasters. You know, we, we see him doing great today, but Derek really put things together on day two. Day two, Tommy, he had zero fish at 1.30 and had almost 30 pounds by 3 o'clock. To me, Derek put it together on that day. Derek Rimmett's 37th after the first day of fishing went on a tear, 29-7, followed by a 37, and this fish here will give him the lead unofficially over Michael Iaconelli. The rookie Derek Rimmett performing with supreme confidence, even though his bites are few and far between, they are quality. Here's a guy never lacking for confidence, the one and only Iaconelli. And, and, and just like giving Derek Rimmett credit, you gotta give Mike Iaconelli credit right now. He's caught over 100 pounds of bass and still might get beat. A lot of times when you have confidence in an area, it's more of a matter of process of elimination until you figure out what they want. You never think with cloud and wind that flipping would be a predominant pattern. And, and today it was. So it, you know, that just goes to show you about fishing. My saying is always fish the moment, you know, and that means forget about what you did yesterday or the day before and just go fishing. Let the fish tell you. If, if we look back, I had one bite on a tree when I was swim bait, and I missed it. And that gave me the clue to come out here and do this. So listen to the fish. Big one. Good fish, quality fish there for Michael Iaconelli, but the leaderboard still unofficially has got him two and a half pounds behind our leader, Derek Remitz. Iaconelli still with one small fish he needs to cull. Remitz getting closer and closer to making history at this Amistad event. I'm excited with what I got right now. I, a little, little on edge. I'd like, got a three pounder in there I'd like to get rid of. I probably just got to settle down a little bit focus on getting one more good bite today. You know, I, I caught them two other good ones. I was, probably didn't show it, but I was trembling on the inside, you know. So every time I get one of them big ones hooked, it just, music starts playing in my head, and my whole body starts shaking a little bit. Just, you know, for what we're fishing for, you know, it's just an adrenaline rush. It's probably a good thing, otherwise I probably shouldn't be doing it. Good one. One more big bass for Derek Remitz. All he's got to do is put this thing in the boat, and unofficially, go. that's going to put Remitz up by six and a half pounds. He has done it. And the one thing you hardly see anymore in professional bass fishing is one technique and one pattern lasting four days, and it's lasted all four for Derek Remitz. Derek Remitz will get rid of the last of his small fish, put that big one in there. Derek Remitz unofficially has wrapped this thing up in a big way. He's made some history. All we have to do is make it official, take it to the scales, and get the rookie his win at Amistad. We'll do that when we come back. The Bassmaster Elite Series, Battle on the Border is brought to you by Motor Guide, Mercury Marine, 
and by Triton Boats. The battle on the border, Berkeley heavyweight of the tournament was Steve Kennedy's 36 pounds and 10 ounces caught on day one. And the Purelator big bass of the tournament was 12 pounds, seven ounces. Oh, they're jacked up. They're ready to go here at Lake Amistad. Everyone knows how the fish catching has been. And we're going to start this way in with the man who crushed him last year on Amistad. That would be Ish Monroe, 104 plus pounds. He comes in here, takes over the lead with 21 pounds and 4 ounces. Next up, Ken Broder of Connecticut. Check him out, 13 pounds, 6 ounces. Can't take over the hot seat, but a good showing for Ken Broder. And now Skeet Reese needs 20 pounds to take over the lead. 19 pounds, 7 ounces. Skeet Reese is going to fall to second place for now. Next up, Jeff Creed of Oklahoma. Needs 20 pounds, only 12.15 for Jeff Creed today. John Murray up next, same story. A great first two days of the tournament. Burned his fish a little hard. Couldn't get around him on this final day. 10 pounds, 13 ounces for John Murray. Next up, the legend KBD. Two-time classic champion Kevin Van Dam. Kevin Van Dam, the all-time money leader with the Bassmasters, needs 19 pounds. 10 ounces in order to take over the lead from Ish Monroe. Looking for double digits, and there he's got him. 22 pounds, 9 ounces. KVD takes over the hot seat. Next up, another former classic champ, former roommate of Kevin Van Dam, Davey Hyde. He's had a great tournament. 21-1 is what he needs to take over the hot seat. And only 17-12, a disappointment for Davey. Next up, Edwin Evers at the start of the season. He said he's going to make this his season. He's going to have a strong year. Edwin Evers needs 19 pounds and 10 ounces, but 15-14 is all he can manage. So Edwin Evers will wait till next time out in California. Next up, it's Todd Faircloth. What heroics he had on day number three here. 37 pounds and 7 ounces, the second biggest stringer of this tournament. He sits merely 15 pounds and 13 ounces out of the lead. 25 pounds, 4 ounces, 25 pounds, 4 ounces, and Todd Faircloth goes over 100 pounds, takes over the lead. Now it's starting to get tight. Michael Iconelli up next on the stage, the 2006 Angler of the Year. Iconelli looking for 24-2. A limit of 5 goes 27 pounds and 7 ounces. 27-7, Iconelli in the lead, and Iconelli over 100. Iconelli in charge. Now comes Steve Kennedy. Steve Kennedy, Steve Kennedy needs 26-10 to take over the lead. 24 and a half pounds for Steve Kennedy. Steve Kennedy will not take over the lead with one angler left to go. Michael Iconelli has one more angler yet to get by. Another rookie, Derek Rimmitz, his first Elite Series event. He needs 23 pounds plus in order to take down Michael Iconelli. Has he got it? Let's see. He needs 23 and change for the lead. 31 pounds and six ounces. Derek Remitz, Elite Series rookie, claims the top of the food chain at the Battle on the Border, his first foray in the Elite Series, and the kid is hot tonight. I'm wondering if at some point he's just gonna let out a big hoop and then collapse. This guy is cool, calm, and collected. What can you say about this tournament? A rookie wins, you got some dude smashing his head into a windshield. Big bass everywhere, I loved it. It was great, great stuff. Derek Remitz has got the top of the list at the Toyota Rookie of the Year site. Take a look at this right here. Remitz on top by a long shot. Scott Campbell, very impressive performance by the rookie from Missouri. Matthews Far of New York, a ways back. And now let's take a look at that Toyota Tundra Angler of the Year race. Very, very important, and the man on top a rookie for now, there he is again, Derek Rimmitz. One more time, a look at that final leaderboard from Lake Amistad, Derek Rimmitz, the incredible rookie performance, over 111 pounds. He was very near the all-time record for four days of fishing. Steve Kennedy, Mike Iconelli, Todd Faircloth, all those guys made it into the Century Club, over 100 pounds of bass, just incredible. It, it definitely, it's a, you know, for Derek right now, I mean, it's like a fantasy. No well spell. <laughs> oh, fantasy, that's exactly. what we're gonna talk about next. Fantasy fishing, log on to ESPNOutdoors.com if you have not yet, and get in on the fantasy game. Here's the way it works, each tournament, you will get to select five anglers. Each angler has a weight, or a points value can't exceed 50. You'll see how it works out. You have to pick some big guys, big names at the top. You have to pick some lesser knowns at the bottom. And your score, based on their final finishes in each tournament, gives you a cumulative score. The competition goes on all the way through the year. Fierce you will get into it. You, I, I guarantee because you and I are into it. Well, we are, and you know what? Let's go ahead and do it. Let's run the scores right now. Since the Bassmaster Classic this year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh! 
Oh, oh just a little bit, ah. of a, little bit of an early season spanking administered to McKinnis. And Jonah. It's a, it's a rebuilding year for me. I, it, it is. Yeah. I mean, you won it last year. I'm not right. going to let you say that. I'm going to get to that first. But let's Good talk stuff. about our strategies. What was your strategy coming in? Why did you pick the Anglers that you You know you what I did? I, I went with Greg Hackney. I went with him in the Classic, and I went with him at Lake Amistad. And unfortunately, I left Greg Hackney at Lake Amistad. I'm going with all California guys. Basically, my picks for California Delta and Clear Lake, they're all guys that live about a block from the launch ramp. That's, that's a good way to do it. My philosophy, on the other hand, get three big names, three hosses you can stick with all year long. I've got Evers, I've got Van Dam, and I've got Steve Kennedy. Their values will go up as the season goes on, but I am locked in. That's my scheme to defeat you in this 2007 year. Did you say Haas? Haas, yeah. I did, I did say Haas. All right. California Delta coming up again March 22nd, the first day for that tournament. Lots online for you. As a matter of fact, you can go online next Monday and get the stories from all 12 of our top 12 anglers here on Lake Amistad. A ton of additional footage to show you how it really went down for each and every one of those anglers out there. And if you will tune in early, if you will get online, ESPNOutdoors.com at the California Delta, the final day, Sunday, March 25th, we will have a yes, big extravaganza, will. a pregame show online for you. It is fantastic stuff. Are you ready for that? It's going to be a time. All right. The California Delta next time on the Bassmasters. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to Bassmaster.com.